What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking about Mega Live, forward-facing sonar, the one boat network, how it all works, let's go. So forward-facing sonar isn't anything new per se. It's been the talk of the industry for the last couple years, say few years. Um, we really wanted to do this video, but we wanted to get really knowledgeable on the equipment, on the transducers, uh, just how everything works. So that's why it's taking us a little time to do this. We didn't want to just rush this video out there. So I'm going to call this entry or beginner mega live video. We're going to do some more in-depth stuff out on the water uh, on schools of bass. <laughs> the reason I say that, got a major thunderstorm coming in, so everybody's kind of pushed back in this little arm. Got three foot rollers going up the river here on the TVA, so uh, not pleasant out there by any means, but I wanted to show you guys schools of fish, uh, the bait going through. We do have some stuff suspended right here, um, but I'm gonna show you guys my settings, my setup, why I chose Mega Live versus the other, you know, Live Scope or Active Target, uh, and then hopefully show you guys some screenshots. Got the re video recording right now showing you guys what we're actually seeing uh, out in front of the, the boat and on 360. So, uh, should be a good one. So, let's, <clears throat> let's talk about, let's talk about the how Mega Live has changed my fishing. And I've said for a long time that the last frontier in bass fishing was suspended fish. You know, if you could figure out how to catch those fish that don't necessarily pull up or down, but they pull out, they move out away from the shore, they suspend in treetops. If you could figure that out, man, you're gonna fish for fish that have never seen a lure before, never really been pressured or fished for before. And that's really what this forward-facing sonar does. Megalive does it. Um, you know, you can angle, you can turn your beam. You can see right here, we got a school of bait uh, sitting right here. I actually have my grids on. That's out 70 feet. Um, let me maximize that for you. You guys can see that's out 60 to 70 feet of school of bait. But um, what the forward facing sonar does, for those of you guys that don't know what it is, it is a sonar beam, a transducer facing out in front of the boat. So you can aim it and you can actually see real time what is going on in front of you. So uh, let's talk about why I held off and why I decided to go with Mega Live. Um, when I got wind that Humminbird was coming out with their version of forward-facing sonar, I got super excited because, you know, when I first got my Ultrex, that was a true game changer. You know, um, being able to fish offshore, coming from the West Coast, fishing deep, clear reservoirs, uh, fishing offshore, was a must. And a lot of times you're facing wind, uh, so it's really hard to position the boat, but having a trolling motor that you could spot lock on and then hold yourself in those three, four, foot, five foot waves and still fish the key locations, I really think is, was a game changer. Um, you know, a lot of the other brands now are doing it. Uh, so it's just elevated the sport. It's made it easier on us, easier on the fishermen. Uh, but when I heard that uh, Humminbird was coming out with their forward-facing sonar, I held off. I was ready to pull the trigger on, on one of the other two. I've been on several boats fishing with some buddies and, and seen the potential, seen the potential to really target those suspended fish. Um, but what I love so much about my system, my setup, is the one boat network, the 360. Uh, so I talked about the... the um, Ultrax and what a game changer I thought that was. 360 was the next for me. Uh, I remember fishing Clear Lake, going down dock lines and seeing schools of ash. It was, it was five bass coming off the left hand side and I saw them on the 360, turned with my A-Rig and I, it caught four of them on four casts. So I caught four out of the five and that's when the light bulb really went off um, the importance of 360. 
So the one boat network, I can literally run my 360 and my forward facing sonar on the same unit. Man, it is hot out here. Got that thunderstorm rolling in and it is humid. Uh, I can run everything on the same unit as you guys can see here. Right now, on a normal day, on my Solux up here, my 15, I run my mapping and my 2D. And then up front, look, you can see this bait ball out here. So that is 30 feet out in front of the boat, right off the, I can aim the trolling motor, so that's where it's pointing. No bass on them. But that is eight feet down, 30 feet out in front of the boat. So getting back to this, napping, mapping 2D sonar, and then at my, my forward facing sonar and my 360. And that is really the key for me, fishing or being able to use the 360 with the forward facing sonar. I could be throwing a top water, burning up the bank, right? I'm, I'm fishing, 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 look down at my 360, I see off to my nine o'clock, my 10 o'clock, a brush pile. Well, before you'd have to try and guess where that brush pile is, now with the forward facing sonar, I literally can turn my foot pedal and line up the exact cast. It's all about efficiency and presenting that bait to those fish um, and making less cast. Out on the water, I want to be catching fish. I don't want to be just fan casting, not knowing what I'm casting to. That's why I had the 360, because now I can see what am I truly missing 360 degrees around the boat. So I believe the magic really happens when you combine the two. Again, like I said, you could be throwing a top water, burning up the bank, see a brush pile out at your 10 o'clock, turn that transducer, see that there's fish actively swimming above it, around it, whatever, and make that cast. Now, everybody thinks, or not everybody, a lot of people think that it's just a, it's just a, it's easy, right? What I have learned so far, I'm gonna kind of stand up a little bit. What I have learned so far is not only is it eye-opening, it is super informative to be able to see how the fish are reacting to your baits. You know, if you throw to that brush pile that you see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on the troll motor a little bit and I'm gonna scan around, but you can get on that brush pile and see those fish avoid your hair jig or avoid your glide bait, but you throw a jig down there, here they come. Uh, changing up colors. So it's all about learning the fish, the mannerisms. Um, yes, it is great for seeing fish, but it's also great for seeing how the fish are acting. And a lot of times it's super frustrating. I'll be completely honest, you know, when you're just fishing and you don't have the ability to see out here and you're not getting bit, you're just assuming that there's fish not around. But this leaves little to the imag imagination uh, with those suspended fish, with those fish that are out there swimming around. You can see them. You can literally see them avoiding your bait. So it can be extremely frustrating. So there's pros and cons. You know, it's it's unfortunate. You gotta you gotta do everything. Um, just gotta be careful that you're not hurting your neck just staring down at the screen. Uh, don't take the actual what's going around, around you with the environment, everything, take it all in. And this is just another tool in our arsenal to put the puzzle pieces together, but don't get too focused on what's going on uh, with your forward facing sonar. So like I said, the magic really happens when you compare that 360 up with the, uh, the forward facing sonar. So you can see where, let's go look for some fish. So typically, I'm gonna go through my settings as well. Those of you guys that already have Mega Live or are planning on getting it, um, I've taken a, a lot of time, like I said, we didn't wanna rush this video, so taking a lot of time to really dial in the settings. Uh, and just like anything, you gotta play around with it. But, um, so what do we got here? We got fish out there, 60 feet out off the troll motor, six feet down. You can see on here that I do have my grid on. That just helps me kind of visualize uh, my cast. One thing that I have learned with being able to see the fish out in front of me and make the cast with my bait, oh, got some lightning, might have to wrap this video up. Um, 
we're a lot closer to these fish than we realize. Waypoints, that sort of stuff. When you have a rock pile waypointed, uh, at least for me, I can only speak for myself, uh, the fish are a lot closer. That waypoint's a lot closer to you. You know, when I look out here and I see fish suspended, let's say 60 feet out, I make a bomber cast. My lure's not even hitting the screen. Um, I'm throwing 90, 100, 120 feet out. And then you take a little, a little flip and you think you're going 20 feet. Well, now that bait just came down at 60 feet. So it just re-emphasizes uh, how important it is to be quiet, uh, creep up onto your, your waypoints, creep up onto your stuff, because these fish aren't that far from us. Let's see what we got out here. Got a bait ball out there suspended. You know, that, that bait ball is 20 feet out. So when I take my bait, I flip that thing out. See that? That's that's 30 feet out. That's right there. In my mind, that's only 15 feet. But we're going to do some more of this in-depth stuff where you guys are watching me cast and everything. But I wanted to give you guys uh, an entry level or a beginner uh, video to this series because we're going to do some store more stuff offshore. Um, but you can see there's a lot going on here. So let's talk about my settings. So I'm going to jump down here to the screen and I will show you my uh, mega live settings. As you can see, I don't have any interference with my 360. I did do the latest update. It's very important to do updates on all your graphs. Um, I'm not sure about the other forward facing sonars, but um, the new update for me really uh, eliminated any of the interference I was getting when I first took the, you know, plug and play when I took the units out and, and hooked them up. But uh, let's dive into the unit real quick. I'll show you my settings. Okay, so. All right, so hit menu. I have my sensitivity set at 16. Now you can play around with this. If you're fishing deeper, farther out, you can obviously increase your sensitivity. Uh, what a, a good rule, rule of thumb, more sensitivity, less contrast will give you kind of uh, the best picture. Sometimes you gotta turn the sensitivity down, turn the contrast up. But you can see right here, I'm running 16 uh, sensitivity. My contrast is at eight. Let's see what happens when I turn this down. Start getting a little down to three, get a little bit more uh, popcorn, some fuzziness down here on the bottom. Look at that fish down there at 60 feet going to the bottom. But I'm gonna turn this back up to, let's leave it at six. Um, Downrange, I do not like to leave it on auto. I like to manually do it. I like to be able to adjust the settings. So there manually I can adjust your depth. See that? So I'm gonna bring that down. Let's bring it down to, to 20 feet. It's really important to be able to see the bottom of your screen, especially if you're fishing a jig, a drop shot, a bait like that, where you want to, you know, watch your bait come up to that piece of structure. Uh, and forward, I have it out to 90 feet. One cool feature about um, the hummingbird, I can just take my my dial. See right here, I got a fish at 60 foot. I can literally just turn this down, adjust my sensitivity, or hit minus and then just bring this down to, let's say, uh, let's do 70 feet, and that'll give me a bigger picture, a close-up picture of what, I, what I'm seeing. You can see there's some bait out here, um, but uh, go ahead and turn this and see what we got. Go back out, hit minus, go back out to 90 feet. Obviously, the more footage, the, air, the bigger area that you are, you're covering, uh, the other cool thing, so we talked about, we talked about, um, you know, the benefit of forward facing sonar with the suspended fish, but to me, there's really two other major benefits. Uh, one is being able to see the break. You know, we all have a good mapping system, either Navionics or Lake Master card. Um, we all want to be able to fish efficiently, right? We want to make the best casts. We're looking at these contour lines. Now, if I'm on a point or a break, I can literally turn this sonar out in front of me and see, 
okay, out there at, let's say 60 feet, it starts going up. You can see how the bottom is coming up. Same thing happens on a break. You can scan out there at 65 feet and see the drop off and you can literally aim your transducer to tell you that information. So you can say, okay, right there at 60 foot feet out, right here is where the break off is. So throwing a jig, throwing a drop shot, throwing a glide bait, a deep crank, you can see how that, knowing that exact cast on that break really helps. And then the second thing uh, that's really, really important is grass lines, you know, lay downs, that sort of stuff. It allows you to make the exact cast along grass lines or along a lay down without getting in the grass or getting hung up. The other thing that's really important with all this newer technology is battery power. It all requires more and more battery power. So I actually run lithiums. Um, I do run a separate battery for all of my electronics with a jumper to my cranker so that I could, I could jump from it if I need to. But the importance with your electronics, as you start losing uh, volts, your clarity, your picture is going to start getting less and less. So it's really important to run fresh wire, bigger gauge wire, and then a battery. But um, we talked about settings. We talked about the importance of uh, changing out your wire, your... Ooh. Let's see if I can get that fish to eat. The importance of changing out your wire, changing out your batteries. Uh, you want to make sure all the stuff runs as clear as possible. Let's see if we can get the suspender one out here. Going to go ahead and move you guys back a little bit. There goes my lure. Oh, there's a fish. Eat it, eat it. Follow it down. So that right there is my lure. That's a fish that came over to my bait and ignored me. Here's my jig on bottom out there at 30 foot. Let's see if we can get My bait falling. Let's see if we can find another fish for you guys. And then we'll cut this video before it really starts dumping on us, but 50 foot out right there. There it goes right down here. Look at the fish coming up from bottom. Let's see if I can swim it over to him. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that fish straight up ignored my hair jig. Probably isn't the best bait to be throwing here uh, for these fish back here, but let's see what else we got. And a tree going on over here. I just look for movement. Looks like we got a fish right here. You can see on 360 over here, there's a rock pile or a, an individual boulder. There it is on live. Let's see if we can get out to it. Missed it.
fish come to look at me. That was almost 70 feet out. Again, I can't wait to take you guys out on schools of active fish to show you. There's that rock. Just 55 feet out, fish going onto it. Let's see if I can get a good cast of that rock. Ooh, bullseye. Bullseye, come on. It's important to give yourself free, you know, slack line. Jig. Where'd you go, fish? The other cool thing about these, this technology is you can see which fish, which direction these fish are leaving. If they go off the screen, you know, this Mega Live only has a, uh, not only, it's got a 20 degree cone angle. So when you're, when you're steering this thing, uh, you can see the fish disappears off your screen you pan right, it's not there. You pan left, and there it is. You can see that that fish is going left. There it is, guys. That is the uh, entry level, the down and dirty, the beginning video to this series with Mega Live. As you can see, um, very clear, works awesome with the 360. Again, that is the magic key, the them working in unison. Um, but you can see the one boat network. I can control my, my Raptors. From up here, I can control my trolling motor. I can waypoint. Doesn't matter if I'm side imaging back there at my at the steering wheel, at the console. I waypoint a rock pile or a, a ledge. I can come up here, see my waypoints. Everything talks. I don't have a different black box or a different unit. Uh, so for me, that's why I made the uh, the choice to go all hummingbird. Um, glad I waited. Everything's been worked flawlessly. Um, now it's just a learning game. Now it's just as a fisherman learning what these fish like, what they don't like. But I'm uh, really excited for this series, guys. Gonna get out and show you guys some actively feeding fish on bait balls. The stuff that we've seen just in the last few months of having this technology has been amazing. I've got the recorder here for you, so now we can record in HD so you guys can, I can overlay that and show it to you guys. But as you can see, suspended fish and offshore structure it's hard to hide now, guys. So if you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. As always, guys, we appreciate your support. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.